Welcome back to another episode of the Gapster channel. Today we're going to talk about building some back loaded horn speakers. Uh, my son wanted to learn woodworking and he also loves music so we said well hey let's just build some speakers. We're going to show you how to build them, uh, the measurements, the plans so you can build some for yourself. Let's not waste too much time and let's get started. The advantage of uh, the backhorn uh, loaded speaker is that uh, the speaker doesn't have to do a lot of work. The air is moving freely and uh, because of that there is a lot of uh, clarity in the sound. Uh, also there is less friction, uh, the sound doesn't have to be converted to heat so basically it's a more efficient speaker ideal for uh, tube amplifiers. Here you can see uh, how without the cover on how the speaker uh, is made inside and you can see it's like a folded horn uh, almost like a trumpet it starts narrow and it widens the arrows it illustrates where the sound is traveling and because of the length of that tube that dictates the frequency so at the end it's only the bass that's coming out of the bottom of the horn um, in general the length of the horn should be between 9 feet and 10 feet and that dictates the lower frequency. Uh, here you can see the plans if you want to get all the measurements you can pause the screen and you can copy all the numbers and that should give you the plans to make your own speakers. All the measurements are in centimeters. To reduce cabinet resonance all the uh, walls around the speaker are actually double. Uh, you can see where the arrows are. We started out with a full sheet of plywood, 3 quarter inch, with one good side maple. Here you can see my son actually doing all the work. I was just helping on this project. It's very important to label all the pieces like 1, 2, 3, 4 or ABC. It's very confusing when you have 20 pieces, they look very similar in size and trying to figure out which is which. And make sure you use a square to avoid lots of problems as you build your project. We used some acoustics with a quarter inch uh, layer of plywood as well and that's also to reduce further uh, uh, vibrations in the cabinet, especially the back wall and the side walls. We also used additional bracing between layers to further reduce vibrations and make a more solid structure altogether. He used a lot of pocket holes that help speed up the project. We made those speakers slightly smaller than the average folded horn speaker, uh, otherwise it would be a really obscenely large. Uh, we still managed to get some really good sound at the end. At this stage we are very thrilled to see uh, almost a speaker being born and that's always so exciting. We picked up some nice uh, cherry wood from a nearby lumber store and that made a huge difference in the aesthetics. The back wall where the speaker is is very well uh, braced and also it's got a double layer and we have multiple perforations and some acoustics to make lots of absorptions and dispersions. Working with the cherry wood was uh, very exciting but also uh, nerve-wracking because there's so many details that need to be done and there was no errors allowed in the process. That was another exciting point, seeing the speaker just coming alive with this beautiful cherry wood. Everything was glued and screwed, so we used a lot of glue as well as screw. The lower part of the horn was constructed with quarter inch plywood that was bent. 
and uh, that created this beautiful finish that complemented the cherry wood. Here it's getting even more exciting, even more closer to the finish line. We did a lot of bracing for the quarter inch bent plywood to give it as much rigidity as possible and stuffed it really tight with some insulation as well and that gave it a very sturdy structure and here you can see as a slice of the speaker and how it's actually being born. You can do some testing by clamping the side first and listening to the speaker and decide what kind of stuffing in between you would like to have done and then when you're happy you can close the side. Some acoustic insulation was put inside, especially on the back wall, and that's a critical point where the vibrations will be slamming the most. 10 gauge speaker wire was soldered, better than any connectors. Then we took it to the listening room with a calibrated mic and roux, and we did many, many sweeps and tests. The frequency response is actually pretty good, it's fairly flattish. And, but we decided to uh, uh, roll off a little bit down with a notch filter the section between 400 uh, and uh, 14k. Try to give it a little bit more flatter and smoother response across the line. So you can see the final result is actually pretty good. We've got uh, fairly bass from the 40s to basically all the way till uh, 18k and that's really impressive. I only had to use some acoustic foams in uh, one small portion of the folded horn. You could see it illustrated in the picture. Basically, on half one side of the last portion of the horn. So basically, because you have a divider in between, one half has the acoustic foam, the other half doesn't. And that helped a lot into balancing the acoustic pressures and basically balance the frequency response. We finally came up with the formula for the notch filter and uh, we started uh, working on it. We use the Tang Band driver W81772, an excellent driver for the money. We used uh, decent quality components for the in, uh, crossover, an air core inductor, a decent capacitor and resistor. Uh, the sound was really good. We both loved the sound and I think it was a very exciting and thrilling experience. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. It will really help the channel. I will be releasing a lot more videos, so stay tuned. Uh -huh.